Hometown boy who made good in his own way, painting haunting scenes of the rural South and his own city, New Orleans. Not really realistic, not quite abstract, but always distinctive. The Roland Golden Way. He's the only American artist to be exhibited in a one-man tour of the Soviet Union in history. Roland Golden, our guest tonight on First Person. I guess, I don't have to guess, when you'll notice that this man is extraordinarily sensitive to his environment, whether it's man-made or nature. Yes, I am. Very sensitive to it. And at one time was, was an activist in the 60s who got involved in the expressway controversy, right? Yes, that's true. Did satirical things. Mm -hmm. You marched with your children in a that's protest right. march. That's, yeah, we sure did. We carried signs down the city hall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you lived in the quarter at that point. Yes, we did. Well, we li we've lived, we don't live in New Orleans, of course, anymore, but our lives in New Orleans were mostly in the French Quarter, and we loved the French Quarter. We still do love it to today. You did a series on demolition. Yes, demolition by neglect. The neglect of the city to care about its architectural heritage. Mm -hmm. And it was primarily uh, aimed at the historically significant buildings that were being demolished in the Central Business District. And yeah. It also, the, the, uh, a neighborhood was being lost. Mm -hmm. And it's not to mean that everything old should be kept, and a lot of, a lot of those buildings w weren't worth keeping, but some very important buildings were. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember the one building was at what was then Natchez Alley, um, which no longer exists. I watched them tear the whole building down uh, in a, less than an hour, virtually the whole building. It's amazing how fast they can destroy and I mean within a 24-hour period or even 12 hours, what it took maybe two years to build. Yeah, this and was on a Sunday morning. They had slipped down there on a Sunday morning and, uh, I remember. Uh, and getting, yeah. it, getting rid of it. And, and, uh, How the, sneaky. The, the crane, the only thing it saved were the large cypress beams mm -hmm. that it pulled out and set aside. You know, one of the things that we, we're going to look at some of Roland's pictures right now that fascinates people and befuddles others is this kind of contrast, it seems, between realism and sharp edge mm -hmm. that looks like a photograph, but not quite, yes. and a kind of abstract quality with always intriguing designs. You love design, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. And you work it into mm -hmm. the painting. Here again, I'm a great believer that if you want a discussion of a painting, write a book about it. Forget the painting. If you want a painting, look at the painting. Let's look at some of Roland Golden's work and uh, your comments, if you please. Okay, well, we're going back over 20 years here to this piece. Uh, this is about a 1963 painting, and I, my style was still evolving. I, well, this is a, uh, an acrylic on board, and I was doing uh, somewhat impressionistic work at that time. And that, is, that, was our, that was our house where we lived, where you see the clothes hanging on the line. That was, we lived there. That was on St. Anne Street. Then this comes along about uh, oh, three years later, and the style which I have become identified with is, is, has developed. As you can see, the patterns. Uh, this was one of a series of things I did on New Orleans cemeteries. That is striking. Thank you. This is called the Victorian Days, and we were living in the quarter. I love facades, and I love wood texture, and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is a, a almost totally realistic painting. I, you know, I don't always use patterns and design, obvious design, in my work. Mm -hmm. And yet it's the way you select it. Like, like a photographer, it's the way it's framed and presented. Yes, well, I, I use photography a lot in my paintings. And, uh, That's but interesting. I, I, I try to use the photographs and not copy it. This is the old oyster truck that used to, used to <laughs> see around New Orleans. This painting went to Russia, incidentally. And uh, there I've abstracted a great deal. Here's another piece that went to Russia. Uh, this was part of my Civil War show that I did, uh, presented in 1970. Uh, this is called Beyond Endurance, where I try to draw an analogy between the American Civil War and the Vietnam War and the futility of wars in general. And let me mention that Roland took a beating <clears throat> critically on that exhibit for some strange reason and Here sold I every did. one of the paintings. People seemed to love it, yeah. or certainly when they were fascinated with it enough to buy. But many of the critics just missed the point, I think. That, that well, it was, it was roundly criticized in New Orleans, but the show was exhibited in other places, and portions of it at least, and everywhere else it was shown, any of the paintings were shown, it was very... Isn't that interesting? Very nicely acclaimed. This yeah. is uh, called Requiem for Dirt Farmers. Uh, it, I, I like to superimpose people who are related mm -hmm. to the landscape and object over my paintings, or vice versa. and. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, much of my family on my father's side were rural farmers, so I had a lot in common with them. 
Now uh, this is Ancestors, and uh, the one, one of the ones that went to Russia again. We've already talked about that one. I bet the Russians enjoyed that. Yes, they seem to. I think they could identify with that. Uh, yeah, I, just there were only one or two they didn't identify with. Uh, the, the, the they don't have cows this bold? No, they identified <laughs> with this one. Uh, the, the road signs, the yellow road signs, which I had in the show, they, oh, they don't yeah. have those over there. Oh, yeah. So they didn't understand that. Now, this is called Worn Out, and uh, uh, it's the, the land's worn out, and the people have worn out, and the house is worn out. It's very typical of what, ha what has happened in the South over a number of years. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is, um, let's see if I can remember the title, uh, let's see, Constitution, uh, Revolution, Evolution, and Pollution, I think is the title, a uh, Solution and Pollution. And uh, it, uh, Here now I've done, I've done a very realistic painting because I thought the idea was uh, good enough and creative enough that uh, it, the inter... Uh, inter you like irony, uh, yes, and, I love con irony. and contrast, yeah, I do. strong I love contrast. Irony and contrast. This is one of my Weed Symphony paintings. Uh, now, this I'm, is another thing that I've noticed with your paintings. You put something very stark in the foreground, mm -hmm. or startling like a sunflower in another case. Yes. And then in the background is the subject that normally would be completely clean. That's right. Uh, and, a juxtaposition is something I do a lot. Here's uh, another one. This is from the Demolition series uh, uh, that, I, that we discussed earlier, Demolition uh -huh. by Neglect. The power of this giant crane in front yeah. of this fragile old building. It makes you cringe. Now this is one that the Russians really didn't understand. They didn't know what this was. And mm -hmm. I had to explain to them that it's a highway marker. This was also in the Russian exhibit. <laughs> I love those road signs. And this is uh, another one within Russia. The, uh, by any other name, I did a series uh, on the shack. By any other name, it's still a shack. We uh, like to call them everything that what they are, quarters, shanties, dwellings. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're, they're really shacks. And, I, and, and again, irony, the, the beauty of the row superimposed in front of the rather rough living conditions of the people. Did uh, not the Russians in some cases say, well, uh, this just shows us uh, what, what our teachers have been telling us, that the United States is poverty-stricken, decadent, run down? <laughs> well, maybe they said that, but I'm sure the majority of them said it would, uh, a lot of them would like to have had that house to live in. <laughs> That's a uh, very good answer. Uh, there, uh, this is the Edge of the Wilderness, which was part of the Battlefield series, which I did uh, later on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went and toured these battlefields, which I have been doing the paintings of. And um, Is it presumptuous for me to say that I get a feeling symbolically with many of your paintings of life and death in a juxtaposition sense? Yes. Uh, as you have here. Yes, that's Dead true. Dead trees against the life in the foreground sense of hope against some despair. Yes, that's Irony. right. I, I, I like to do that. Boy, I wish I could paint that. But you're going to have to do it instead. <laughs> this you is an uh, uh, angle assemblage which, uh, where I've taken the old wooden horses that, uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, that, that they used to cover holes and made a design out of it. There's no social commentary in this painting. This is strictly mm -hmm. a, a, a design, geometric construction that I put together using realistic images. Uh, this is through the wind. I love, I love to drive on the highways, and uh, I use the opportunity of placing the leaves throughout the pictorial uh, area of the picture, uh, the rectangular span of it, and breaking the space down. If you think about the cow and the, and the mud puddles, it's related to this painting with the leaves in it, and that the painting has depth, but it's, all, it's almost two-dimensional. Uh, this is part of uh, four pieces with the road sign that I use, using the road sign as a, uh, to display the change of the seasons. This, this one, uh -huh. I think, is the summer season here. Uh -huh. I think we've got the other three seasons in the, in the series of, of slides. Uh -huh. uh, this is uh, crossing over. Yeah. Uh, this painting, no matter where you look at it, you're crossing over the, the bridge from whichever angle. And it's a part design and part realism. This is my high noon for Victoria, which uh, is what I call my borderline surrealism. Surrealism is taking mm -hmm. realistic objects and placing them in, in an impossible situation. Borderline surrealism is taking and putting them in a possible but highly unlikely situation. This is another one from the, uh, the, the, uh, the signs of the season. This is winter. This is New Year's Eve's mm -hmm. Eve, where mm -hmm. I uh, uh -huh. used ice and everything to smear over the painting. You see it. And that's, this is called the Over the Hill Church. Uh, this was part of the <laughs> uh, Road Streets and Highways series that I was working on. How'd you on get this that. perspective? Did you lie down on the ground to do this? I, I, I created it, uh, the perspective. Uh -huh. uh, you'd have to lie down on the ground to get that. But, uh -huh. 
perspective, approaching a realistic image from an unusual perspective is one of the options that yeah. a realistic art, artist has to make his work more creative. It seems to me that it's not what the artist sees that the, uh, that the viewer has never seen, it's how he perceives it in his mind's eye. But first I perceive it from what angle, what perspective, and so on. And then, of course, you do take some liberties. We're going to take a break here for just a moment, and then we'll show you one example of how, I think it's fascinating, how Roland will use photographs, for example, in preparation to produce not an imaginary shot, but an abstract, realistic shot, if that's the term. Boy, that's, I hate these That's terms. it, abstract, it's realistic. It, a golden, whatever. Yeah, okay. We'll be back in just a moment.